students, uh, my lovely wife is here today, uh, Sister Sydney. We're now going to call on the missus, and she will be uh, addressing you today about the most serious subjects that you have ever thought about or considered. Most of you students are in big trouble. In fact, most of you are in big, big trouble. The truth is, most of you on this campus have never done one good thing in your life. Most of you have never committed one act of love in your life. Most of you are living for one thing and one thing only, self-gratification. And I'm here to warn you. The Bible says to warn the wicked. The Bible says that if we Christians do not warn you, your blood will be upon our hands. So I'm warning you, be not to see. First Corinthians 6 and 9 says that no fornicator and no adulterer will inherit God's kingdom. And it's common knowledge that there are four and four God knows about you girls who are having sex with your boyfriend. And God calls you whores. And God also knows about you men who are chasing these lewd women. And I know I 
Jesus hates your guts. That's right. He hates your character. You talk about the love of Christ, I'll give you the love of Christ. This is all the love of Christ you ever going to get. He died on the cross for your sins. He died on the cross to change your life. That is the love of Christ. But you didn't open your Christmas present, sinners. You were celebrating right. Christmas, but you didn't open your present. What she means is you have to accept the gift that God gave you or, or it doesn't accomplish anything. If you go on through your life and you ignore Jesus, and you come to the end of your life without Him, someday you're going to stand before Him and He's going to ask you who you are. You're either born again in the Spirit of God and you repented of your sins or you haven't. So basically, I agree with what you're saying, but I think I would talk a little bit more about what the blood of Christ means and the love of Christ. Because He loves you enough to die for you. Y'all don't know anybody in your life that loves you any more than Jesus. I can get the girls around here to have sex with them on Friday and Saturday night. And some of the boys on this campus have become so very, very sissified. They're so sissified that they cannot make it through the day without masturbating. Yes, some of these fraternity boys two or three times a day. But let me warn you, students, contrary to what your professors teach you, contrary to what your psychologists teach you, masturbation is not natural. It is perverted and unnatural. Only perverts do it. And let me warn you, sin is a slave master. The Bible says he that commits sin becomes a slave to sin. That means your masturbator of today could very well become your homosexual of tomorrow. That's right. And students, let me warn you, your homo of tomorrow is very likely to be your psychology professor of the next day. Yes. They cater to that sort of field. Because most of psychology is unnatural, unreasonable. Most of the psychology studies on this campus, people who commit unnatural, unreasonable acts can relate to it. Now the Bible says that homosexuality is an abomination in the eyes of God. Do you hear that? It says in Leviticus, thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. And it goes on to say that if you do that, you shall surely be put to death. That's right. That's what God said. I'm warning you, except you repent, all you queers and all you lesbians are going to burn forever in the lake of fire and be not deceived, students. The Bible teaches that no drunkard will inherit God's kingdom. And it is common knowledge that drunkenness abounds on this campus. God knows about you beer guzzlers. God knows about your keg party. God knows about your wicked fraternity party. Thank you for those confessions. God knows that these fraternity boys like to throw keg parties. And they like to throw keg parties 
for two reasons and two reasons only. Number one, so that they can get wasted. And number two, so that they can find these sleazy sorority girls over. Yes, because they know that if they can get a little beer into these sorority girls, they can get into their pants. But let me warn you, that the Bible says, whoa, unto him that gives his neighbor strong drink, that he may uncover his beckoning. You know what woe means? W-O-E. That means there is a curse on you. That's right. Curses, curses, curses are on all you fraternity boys and any of you other boys who buy strong drink for these girls. And I must warn you that all you beer guzzlers, all you wine givers, and all you whiskey drinkers shall burn forever in the lake of fire and be not to see that the Bible teaches shall inherit God's kingdom. Now the Greek word for sorcery is pharmakia, which means the illegal or misuse of drugs. That would include you acid heads. That would include you cocaine users. You marijuana smokers. If you are using drugs for anything other than medicinal purposes, you're what the Bible calls a sorcerer. And the Bible teaches that all you sorcerers are going to burn forever in the lake of fire. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians excuse me, 6 and 9 that no idolater will inherit the kingdom of God. And it's common knowledge that there are rock and roll freaks all over this campus. You look like the type that listens to rock and roll. <laughs> Yes, it's common knowledge that a lot of you students can quote more lyrics to rock and roll music than you can Bible verses. Why? Because the truth is, most of you would rather listen to rock and roll than read the Bible. Why? Because you love your rock and roll and you hate God. That's right. This university, the University of Southern California, is a university of God haters. 
Well, that's I mean, subjective. People with no talent, uh, some of them really get converted. They were playing that rock and roll. They haven't got any better, better talent than that, so they keep on playing the rock and roll. But don't think for a moment that those striper freaks are Christians. Those aren't Christians. Hey, when those boys become Christians, they'll dress like real men. They won't go around with these tights on like a bunch of sissies. The Bible says that a man should not wear that that pertains to a woman. And a woman should not wear that that pertains to a man. Yes. The Bible is a sexist book. God is a sexist God. God created sex. You probably would have made them just men, but God made them male and female. God made them Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. Now, students, back to the rock and roll. I don't know how to break this to you, but, well, I guess I'll just have to come right out and tell you. Students, the truth is, John Lennon is in hell! Have you been there? Janis Joplin is in hell! What is hell? Jimi Hendrix is in hell! Why, do you want, why don't you answer it? He's in heaven! Seven. Seven. 
Let's go! 